Hi honey. Looks like you're having a hard time this morning. How are you feeling now? Thanks for worrying about me. I'm doing much better now. Are you on your break now? Yeah, just about to head to the cafeteria. The hamburger special they have today is calling my name. Oh, that hamburger with that special barbecue sauce. I used to get that every time they had it, too. I could kill for one right now. I can't believe it's been three years since I quit. I'm sorry you had to give up your job just to marry me. Not at all. Don't mention it. It would be hard for me to go to work and do everything around the house. Besides, what I really wanted was to start a family. And my gynecologist told me that my body won't be strong enough to do both. Yeah, but no need to worry about that any longer. We finally have a healthy bun in the oven. A healthy bun sounds so cute. Just think, in two more months, you're going to be a father. It still feels very surreal. Like I'm in a dream. Sorry that it took this long. This little bun has been three years in the making. You don't have to say that this was a team effort. But your mother was always hounding you about a grandchild. I know it wasn't easy on you. I'm sure she was much worse to you. Anyway, you don't have to worry about my mom. She's just a very impatient person. You don't have to listen to what she says. Well, I can't actually ignore her. I just got a text from her saying that she's coming over in the afternoon. Really? Again? I'm so sorry. It's okay. I think she just wants to be helpful. Also, I think she's worried about me. I am a first-time mother, after all. But it does get a bit tough to handle when she starts to criticize the way I do the housework. Yeah, I can only imagine. To be honest, there are times when I wish she would leave me alone. Only because there are days when this pregnancy makes me so exhausted. It's okay if you don't listen to her. Just let it go in one ear and out the other. But she's taking the time to teach me things. For example, the other day she made me refold all your underwear because I was doing it wrong. What? She made you do that? I thought the way you were doing it started to look like the way my mom did it. I thought it was just a coincidence. I appreciate what she's trying to do for you, but I don't really like it when she tries to do the same for my clothes. I have my own way of doing things too, you know? But I can't just ignore her like you said. I totally understand. I'll try to do something about that. The very least I can do right now is to tell her not to come over that often. If you could, that would be great. I'm sorry about the way that my mom is behaving, but I hope you also understand. We lost my dad when I was still very young, so I'm all that she has. I'm her only son and I can't be too hard on her. I totally get that. She's only doting on you. You are the way you are because she raised you into this wonderful person. I admit that sometimes she is a bit much in her ways. I'm glad you can see that too. She still treats you like a small child sometimes. It's cute though. What's that pet name that she calls you again? Her Brian Pie? Don't you start with that. I'm already a 30 year old man. I don't want to be called that. It's embarrassing. Sorry, Brian Pie. Just joking. Nice try changing the subject to make fun of me, aren't you? By the way, how has work been? We haven't talked about your work in a while. When you come home, all we talk about is the baby. 
Well, actually there's something that I haven't told you about yet. What is it? If you make me wait to hear it, I'm going to start thinking that it's something bad. It's the opposite of that. There's been talk of a promotion. Who's getting a promotion? Is it you? You are being promoted? That would be so amazing if you do. Does it come with a raise, too? We can really use the extra money now that we have a baby on the way. Don't get yourself too worked up until you hear everything. Yes, I am the one that's being considered for promotion but there's a catch. We would need to move to the city. Do you think that would be okay for you? We will have just had the baby. You'd be dealing with a newborn and a new city. Do you think you can manage? It won't be too hard. We would have to move. Hmm, I don't know about that. I need to think about it a little more. But this is a huge leap for your career. I'm sure I'll be able to cope with it somehow. That sounds good. I thought you would say no for sure since the burden of raising the baby falls mostly on your shoulders. Of course, I'll be helping out when I can. The promotion does come with a raise as well as a steady increase in salary every year, so that would be a major plus. I think this is hard for us to decide right now because we haven't had the baby yet. Let's think about it a bit more after our daughter is here. That's right. Our daughter. What is it? Aren't you happy that it's a girl? Yes, I'm happy about having a baby, no matter the gender. All right, but if you could choose, a girl would be better, don't you think? They say that girls are easier to raise from a young age. Yeah, I agree with that. Girls are so cute. I can see myself wrapped around her little fingers. You have to promise me that you'll stop her from taking complete control of me, okay? Okay, I promise. But you're going to be such a good father. But I'll be happiest when both are happy. I can just picture us now. I would love to go shopping with her and cook with her. It's going to be so wonderful. That sounds wonderful. But my poor credit card will be getting quite a workout. Oh, how insulting. We won't be that bad. I'm just joking. I'm just getting back for earlier. The promotion will help with your shopping bills too. Anyway, the fun time is over. I need to get back to work soon so that I can provide for my beautiful wife and daughter. Is it time already? Okay then, record for us, Daddy. Over one month later. Hey Nancy. Are you back yet? How long are you going to spend at the supermarket? You do know that the more time you're there, the more likely it is that you're going to buy things that you don't need. Food loss is a serious deal. I'm sorry for keeping you waiting, Sandra. It's just that I can't walk that fast anymore. My belly is getting really heavy. I tire out easier, too so right now I am sitting on a bench and resting. You're supposed to be young. Where's your stamina? You need to hurry because my Brian Pie will be coming home soon. You need to cook his dinner first. Then after that, we need to do the laundry. When you've done that, it should be time to do the dishes. When you're done with the dishes, he'll be done with the shower. And you'll need to clean the bathroom too. There's so much for you to do. There's no time for you to rest on a bench. But Brian usually helps with the housework when he comes home. Well, how lucky you are. But you shouldn't be accepting his help. You're the housewife. Cleaning everything is your job, not his. He already has a job that supports you financially. Are you trying to kill my son by exhausting him? Believe me, that is not my intention at all. 
It's just that with this big belly of mine, it's harder and harder for me to do the housework by myself. And, well, the smell of the cleaning supplies makes me nauseous. My, my, aren't you a sensitive one? When I was in the same situation as you, I was doing all the work in the house without even one word of a complaint. Even up to my due date, I made my husband dinner before I went to the hospital. Why? because that's how you take care of your family. No excuses and no complaints. You just do your job. I'm sorry. Well, I guess there's nothing that you can do. It's not your fault that your generation doesn't have the same work ethic. I'm also not a monster. I'll fold the laundry for you. Hurry up and finish buying those groceries. Okay, I'll do my best to finish up here as soon as I can. Thank you very much for taking care of the laundry. Don't mention it. It saves us from having to do it twice. I would have had to fix all the mistakes you make when doing the laundry anyway. I swear, you young people these days don't even know how to fold your own underwear. Did no one ever teach you? I'm sorry. I'll try to learn from you. Oh, that reminds me. Remember to buy whole grain bread. None of that bleach white stuff. You'll also need to pay attention to the ingredient list. Try to buy as many organic items as you can. Don't be tricked into buying cheap alternatives. This is food for your body that we are talking about. My boy only deserves the good stuff. Yes, Sandra, I always look at the ingredients list before I put it into my cart. My body needs a well-balanced diet, and I'm afraid that my boy is just a picky eater. Really? He's a picky eater? He has eaten everything that I have put in front of him so far. Oh, that's because he's worried about hurting your feelings. One more thing. It's the month for oysters. Ask the staff for some fresh raw oysters. Raw oysters? I can't eat those. My doctor said that I should be avoiding most seafood just in case. I know that, but I'll be eating with you guys tonight. And I have been craving them for a while now. You just need to buy enough for Brian and I to eat. It would be silly for us to stop eating something just because you can't have it. That's true. I wouldn't want you guys to stop eating what you like just because I can't join you. I took a look at your fridge and me. I must say it's full of food that Brian doesn't like to eat. Are you feeding him properly? I hope he's going not hungry. Speaking of hungry, I'm feeling a bit puckish for biscuits. Be a dear and buy those too. Biscuits? What kind of biscuits? You know the ones. The ones with the cheese in the middle. Brian loved those too since he was young. Okay, I'll buy those too if I see them. You need to be back here in about 30 minutes. Don't take too long. I'll try my best to get everything done in 30 minutes. Don't try, just do it. Trying isn't good enough. But Brian was the one who told me not to push myself and to just do things at my own pace. I do feel really bad that you have to come over and help all the time. Don't mention it at all. Brian also said the same thing to me. But you know there's no way that I can let Brian come home to a messy house every day. So I decided to do something about it. I don't really think that our house is that messy. I do clean it every day. I guess we all have our own idea of cleaning because the dust everywhere is very obvious to me. Well, I suppose that will happen since you're always using your belly as an excuse for not doing things properly. You're having a girl, right? Yes, we're going to be having a baby girl. Are you sure? Because your belly is quite pointed and that has always been the sign for a boy. Is that true? Just between me and you. You don't have to be so overprotective about your belly. What do you mean by that? All I'm saying is that I got a boy on our first try, and boys are just, you know, so much more useful. It would have been better for my first grandchild to be a boy. 
Someone who can continue my late husband's family's name. Well, a baby is a gift. We don't know what we're going to get. We will try for a boy next time. Next time? Who knows when you'll have another baby? It might already be too late. Even if you say that these things are out of my control. Poor me. Anyway, your floors need waxing. Where do you put your wax? We ran out of wax a while ago. We haven't bought more since I got pregnant because wax floors are slippery, so we thought that it would be best not to wax the floors for a while. That's why your floors are looking so grim. You still need to wax your floors. Just be careful when you walk. Wear slippers with rubber soles. You can't stop taking care of your house for a temporary inconvenience. Besides, when your baby starts crawling, a wax floor would be better to do that on. Just listen to me and order some. Two weeks later. Nancy, honey, are you okay? I just got into a taxi. We're rushing to the hospital now. Did the doctors tell you anything? Honey, it's okay. Calm down. The baby and I are fine. We're okay. The fall didn't hurt us. The tests came back and we're both fine. But I decided just to admit myself into the hospital. I just thought it would be better if I stay in the hospital a few days before my due date, just in case. No need to rush over. Oh, I see. That's a relief. I only heard that you were admitted into the hospital, but I didn't get any details. Sorry, I didn't mean to worry you. What about my mom? I heard something about stairs. Honestly, I couldn't hear much. How's my mom doing? We were taken to the hospital together, but I'm in the maternity ward now. She's in a different ward, but I'm not sure which one. I wonder if mom is okay. Did the both of you fall together? How did that happen? Well, this is going to be a long story. Hold that thought. I got a text from my mom. Is she serious? Why? What did she say? She said that she broke a bone. Oh, I see. She got away with just a broken bone then. What? Why would you say that? Do you know what you're saying? My mom broke her leg. The sound she made when she fell was inhuman. And with the way she fell, I figured she'd probably kick the bucket. Nancy, come on. Can't you phrase that a little differently? I know you don't like her, but she's still my mother. You can't just say that. I'm sorry, Brian, but I'm still absolutely fuming. She did this to herself. What are you talking about? I'm saying that it's literally her own fault. I have no idea what that could possibly mean. Please just tell me what happened and don't spare any of the details. About an hour ago, she was putting wax in the hall on the second floor. Wax? I thought we decided not to wax the floor since they'd be too slippery. That's what I told her, but your mother still insisted that we wax the floors. I was going downstairs to get something when I felt a push from your mother. What? My mother pushed you? Yes, she did. Thankfully, my reflexes are still quite sharp. I got a hand on the railing and only fell a few steps. But since your mother was the one who pushed me, she slipped and fell ahead of me. Is what you're telling me really true? Yeah. She suddenly strongly insisted that we wax the floors. I thought that something weird was going to happen. But why would she do that? Your mother wanted a boy for her first grandchild. 
What? That's her reason? I told her that these things were out of our control, and I could tell that she wasn't happy with that answer. So that's when she decided to. I can't even finish that thought. Did she really? Oh, God. She was hoping you would lose our baby. I don't want to believe it either, but I think that was her intention. She didn't only put our baby in danger, but she put your life in danger too. Something could have happened to you. I'm really sorry about this, honey. No, none of it is your fault. I should have been stronger when I told her to leave you alone. I should have told her to stop coming over so often. Gosh, I'm so glad nothing happened to you. Thank you for protecting our baby too. Honey. Suddenly I'm getting scared. Everything is going to be alright. I promise you, from now on, my mother won't be allowed anywhere near you or our daughter. We're almost at the hospital. I'll go to your room first, and we can talk more about it. Thank you, honey. After that, I'll have a nice long chat with my mom. I'll tell her to leave my family alone. Over one month later. Hello, Nancy. I'm being discharged from the hospital tomorrow. Will it be okay for me to get a taxi and go over to your house? Sandra, please don't come to our house. Why not? I haven't fully recovered yet. It's still difficult for me to walk. I need you to look after me. What? Why do I need to look after you? Because you're my daughter-in-law. You have to help me. Oh, so now you think of me as your daughter-in-law. That's very surprising. You never made me feel that I was your daughter-in-law or treated me like one. Oh, stop that. Don't make it sound like I was bullying you. I might have been strict with you, but I was only doing it for your own good. It's my job to teach you how to be a proper wife to my son. It doesn't matter now. My hands are full taking care of our daughter. Oh, that's right. You gave birth to a girl. Congratulations. Are you trying to be nasty? Oh no, I'm just being honest. I want to see her face, so please let me see her tomorrow. I thought Brian talked to you already. Didn't he warn you to stay away from me and our daughter? He made you promise, didn't he? You swore that you would leave us alone. Oh, but that was a month ago. Things were different then. I'm warning you now. If you come, I'm going to call the police. What? Why would you call the police? I'm just a grandmother going to see her grandchild. Your presence is a threat to our safety. Stop joking around. Thanks to you, I broke a bone in my leg. You need to take responsibility for that and look after me until I'm fully healed. Why do you think that it's my fault? You're the one who put wax on the floor and made me slip. You don't like me, so you tried to get rid of me somehow. That was the plan. You're so cruel. I can say exactly the same thing to you. What? How dare you? You're the one who insisted on waxing the floors that day. Don't even try to deny that. Because I had text messages to prove it. So what if I did? That means I deserve to break my leg? You hate my daughter and me. You were setting up your trap and waiting for me to slip and fall. But you ran out of patience. You saw me walking towards the stairs and thought that was your opportunity to speed up the process. That's a big accusation. Where's your proof? Can you really say to Brian that those weren't your true intentions? Don't contact me just because your son is ignoring your calls. There's been some misunderstanding. I just want to get to know you better. That's why I'm contacting you now. Get to know me better. Did you think that line would work? 
just look at what you tried to do. If I didn't grab onto that handrail, I wouldn't have my daughter with me right now. Do you have any idea how traumatic that idea is for me? Fine. I apologize for that. That isn't something that can be fixed with a lousy apology. Okay, I'll do whatever you want me to do tomorrow. I'll leave it on my knees and beg if that'll make it better. Don't even bother coming over to our house. Please be reasonable. Why can't I at least come over? I wasn't going to say anything about this, but no one will be there even if you do come. We are moving out of here today. What? Moving out? That's a lie. Brian didn't say a word about that. Of course, he wouldn't. There's no reason for him to tell you. In fact, you are one of the reasons that we are moving. The three of us are going to move to the city. What? What about Brian's job? He got a promotion. That's the main reason why we needed to move. We didn't think it would be possible so soon after the birth of our daughter. But the timing was perfect. This way we can get away from you and start a new life together. But what about me? I'm also a family. I'm Brian's mother. You are not family. Family don't try to kill one another. You are just emotional baggage. Emotional baggage? I am thankful that you raised Brian on your own. But he can't be your child forever. He is my husband and the father of my child. He has his own family to take care of now. Of course I understand that. No, you don't. You don't understand that at all. Don't come near us ever again. He has a family and I'm also part of that family. We need to rely on each other. Well, I can assure you of one thing. We're never going to rely on you. Ever. But also don't worry. No matter how much we can't stand you. My husband has a phone number that you can call. You can try to contact him, but I can't promise that he will always respond. That's so cold. He will only come to help you if it's an absolute emergency. So don't abuse this privilege and don't even bother asking for our new address. He won't give it to you. But wait, you're going to need help with that baby. What are you going to do? It's your first child. You're going to need help in my advice and support. I'm not going to be asking you for any of that. I should probably let you know. Brian's underwear that you always folded. Well, he would refold them to the way that he liked after you leave. What? I didn't know that. He complained that the way you folded it made it hard for him to get out of the drawers. You see, we don't need your help at all. Even if you do come and help, we will have to redo everything anyway. Afterwards, my mother-in-law decided to undergo rehabilitation for her leg on her own. Without any support or place to go, she became isolated and fell into a state of depression. She stopped leaving the house, which visibly aged her. Brian occasionally visits her, but only for a few hours and never stays overnight. He doesn't want our daughter to be exposed to her negativity and bitterness. As a result of that incident, Brian chose his wife and daughter over his mother. He allowed his mother to face the consequences of her actions from then on. My daughter and I haven't seen her even once. We don't miss her at all. Although the move was a bit rushed, Brian's company assisted with some of the moving expenses. We were able to find a suitable apartment that meets all our needs. We enjoy living in the bustling city where everything we need is conveniently located nearby. Most importantly, I am no longer living in the shadow of my mother-in-law. I have my own identity and freedom. Brian is doing well in his job and even helps take care of our daughter on the weekends.
His support has given me more free time, and I believe it makes me a better mother. I have also started taking online courses to pursue my passion for writing. I hope to publish my own book someday.